Hi, this is Swan from Swan Amity Studios. Today we're going to be working on applique preparation. We're going to start with a prepared piece of applique. The freezer paper is cut to the size of the final piece and ironed on to the fabric we're going to be using. Today's fabric is a beautiful shot cotton from K Facet. We're also going to be using a number four round brush, liquid starch mixed with water according to your taste, a trolley needle which looks like a banjo pick attached to a long darning needle blunted at the end and fits on the finger like this. We're also working with a nice hot iron, smaller than your average iron. This one is a sealing iron from Hobby Co. You'll notice I have it all the way up to high heat. That's because I like to work quickly. Let's see how we're going to make this all work now. I'm going to take our brush, dip it into the liquid starch, and we're going to start adding it to the seam allowance around our piece. You'll notice that I'm staying off of the freezer paper. I'm just painting it right onto the seam allowance. If you get a little bit onto the freezer paper, that's okay. You just want to brush it off as quickly as you notice it. We're looking to get a nice stable edge, and if the freezer paper stays relatively dry, that's a lot easier to do. See, I'm working all the way around the edge on all the sides that I intend to turn. This side here in the inside I don't plan on turning. There's a piece that fits over the top of that. So we only put starch on the sides that we plan to turn over. Now I like to let the starch sit for just a moment. So while we're waiting for that to sit for a second, we'll go ahead and paint the starch on a couple of extra pieces. And that way while I turn over this piece, these can be sitting and will be ready to be turned over after I finish the larger section. And there we go. We'll set that aside, move our starch out of our way. Trolley needle is on. You'll notice that some illustrations will show a trolley needle worn this way. The problem with that is that it, as you place pressure on the top point of your trolley needle, you're going to create stress and pressure on the knuckle here, which can be painful. If you flip that trolley needle over and wear it this way, you're less likely to have any of that stress as all of the pressure is going to be riding on the tip of your finger, which is much easier to do. Now we're going to take our hot iron, just like this, ready to go, and I'm going to turn my piece so that I can start where I started starching. That would be the driest section so far. That one's had the most time to sit. I'm going to take my trolley needle and slide it underneath the piece, move it around here so that it pulls my fabric over the top, just like that. I'm going to bring my iron in. Notice how that trolley needle keeps my fingers well out of the way and also allows me to keep my thumb or any of my other fingers on the surface of my project to hold it into place. I'm not fighting anything here. Any time that my iron has to turn, I actually need to turn my piece so that I can keep ironing comfortably. Trolley needle turns over the fabric the iron circles in towards the piece. Now I mentioned circling in because if I put the iron directly down on the surface I can cause little dog ears or points to show up in things and what I'm looking for is a nice smooth surface and we get that smooth curved edge by circling towards the piece instead of flattening on top of the piece. There we go. Now as we come up to this point here, we want to take a moment and get ahead of ourselves. 
If we come up to the point, put our trolley needle in the point, and fold the fabric over the top of it so that we have a little blunted edge, just like that. Point is tucked away in there. Now let's see what that does for us as we come up to the point. Here we are to the point. The trolley needle pulls that over the edge, and we have the opportunity then to have tucked all of those seam allowance edges inside that point. I'm going to turn this and come in from the other side. There we go. Now everything is folded in on itself. Very good. And the end result is that we get a tighter, tinier point, more well protected. And any trimming we might have done is now folded inside where we'll have less opportunity for anything to pull out later. Here's our last little edge. We're just going to finish that up just like that. Flip it over. Give a little top ironing to smooth everything out. And there's our completed piece in the shape that we need. Let's compare it to the pattern. And it sits right where it should. Perfect. Now this piece is ready to be applique. We hope that you enjoyed this video explaining the freezer paper starch method. If you have any other questions or you're looking for other tips and tricks for applique, please visit us at swanamity.com. That's S-W-A-N-A-M-I-T-Y dot com, where you'll find lots of other different tips and tricks for producing perfect applique pieces. Remember, all the world is a quilt, and we encourage you to quilt the world.